Since it's September, that means it's the ninth month of the year, and we're going to scrapbook nine four by six photos on a single page. So, and um, this month's page includes a pocket that will hold eight photographs on um, cards that, that are easy to take out of the top of the page protector. And the pocket's made from an overlay or a transparency, although you could um, substitute paper, but I like the fact that with the transparency you can see the photos behind. And then the ninth photo is there on the front of the layout um, on show, and that way you can have a, a variation and you can include um, two portraits on one side, two landscapes on one side. You can mix it up in um, any combination. So on this particular page, I've used eight landscapes and one portrait because that was what I had. Um, but I'm going to show you a slightly different variation on the second page. So this is the first layout in a um, brown red and green color scheme. Um, it mixes some Hambly, American Crafts, and Cosmo Cricut. And then I'm going to take you through a second one in a, a brighter, girlier color scheme with pinks and yellows and grays. And I'll show you all those supplies in a second. If you want to grab nine 4 by 6 photos, I'd love for you to scrap along with me. Here's a closer look at the first page, the one that's already finished. And there's a wood grain transparency and wood grain pattern paper. And then these two cards come out and each holds four 4x6 four photos. And there's also room for journaling and embellishment at the top. And these pieces are big enough that they will be easy to take out of the page protector once it's in the album. So I don't need to... Um, I don't need to adjust the page protector in order to make this um, accessible when you're looking at the album. So I'm going to make a second page using the same design principle, but I'm going to do it in a different color scheme and um, with slightly different orientations to the photos. So let me just uh, show you what I'm doing. I actually, for this one, wanted to start with a page I'd already created because I realized I made this page um, just recently with two photos from this event and then realized that I had nine more prints. That was what I had. Um, so if I scrap the additional nine pictures, then that's all of the photos from that event scrapped. So that means that it's only going to be two pages and it will... the pages can face each other in my album. So I decided, although I, I didn't start them as a two-page spread, that I would um, pull my supplies to coordinate in some way with this, although it's going to be slightly different, so that the two will um, complement each other when they're side by side. So I'm using this same color scheme of gray, pink, and yellow, and I'll show you what I've pulled out. I had um, an additional sheet of this yellow plaid in the full 12 by 12 so I'm going to use this as my page background just like the brown wood grain on the earlier page. And for the transparency pocket I'm going to use this one by Hambly which is called Sweet Tooth and it's all sorts of little candy jars. And it comes in a few different colors but this one is a nice bright pink so that's going to create the um, the majority of the page, those two things. Then I'm going to put the photo cards on gray cardstock. So although the background isn't gray like this page, the, this same gray cardstock will appear over here. It's just going to be where I use the cream cardstock here. I'm going to use gray this time. And then some pattern papers and things to finish things off. So I've pulled and um, these three, which I had used on this layout, so this is um, a scrap from a crate paper design from the portrait collection. And this is my little shoe box from the Audrey collection. And this is a fabric paper from the Amy Tangerine from American Crafts, and it's adhesive on the back. I just used it here for these tiny little polka dots. Um, but then I also want a bit more pink on this second layout than I did on this first page. So I just wanted to show you, this is um, this is the Daydreams collection from American Crafts, and these are the, the fronts of the pages. So it's a very whimsical, bright, cutesy type of line. 
And um, so it, at first glance, it may be a line that looks like um, papers to use for scrapbooking kids or spring or something like that. But I just want to show you, in case you haven't noticed, the back. This is my favorite part of this collection. Okay, the back of every single sheet is so completely usable for anything. It's these tiny mini stripes, like a pinstripe, tiny little polka dots, and tiny little grid. And so they're in pinks, orange, brown, green, turquoise, and I, I love the backs of these papers, and I know that whenever I, um, whenever I think that the front is perhaps a little too bold, like this floral is a bit, it's a bit too big for me. It's just, it doesn't speak to my style. But this pink with the white polka dot, I'm totally going to use every single inch of that. So I just wanted to show you that whole collection from the other side in case you didn't notice. Because I think this is a great part of the collection. Okay, moving on. I'm going to pull these two, the light and the hot and pink polka dots. Um, so I'm going to pull those two out. These I'll leave for later, but I just wanted to show them to you all together. Okay, so I have lots of pink, some gray, some yellow, and a little bit of black and white. I also went ahead and pulled out the same letter stickers that I used on this layout, but I'm not 100% convinced if that I'll use the same sets. Um, this one is a printed chipboard thicker that's still available. Unfortunately, this one, which was my favorite alphabet, I've used it tons and I, I still love it. It's... Um, uh, charcoal lullaby foam thickers, but it's just been discontinued, I'm afraid, and no fault of two peas. It's been discontinued um, by the manufacturer, so I'm sorry, but I will see if I use that one or not, but I obviously use it here. And then these smaller pink letters, which are by Sassafras, and they're called Pink Swirl. So we'll see if that um, works for the lettering on the, the facing page here, um, but that's what I started with, so I, def I figured I would just go ahead and pull those same letters, and then if I need to change it up as I get there, I can do that later. Okay, so I'm going to get started with making a page with this color scheme, but this page design. The first thing you want to do for this page with nine photos is to figure out which photos will go together on the blocks. So eight of the photos will be in groups of two on um, cardstock cards and then one photo will be on the front of the layout. So it helps if the two can always be in the same orientation because obviously two, um, car or two photos that both read the same direction is a lot easier to look at than if one of them was the wrong way around. So um, I ended up, I had nine photos left, so I'm definitely working with what I have available. And I honestly had thought that this would be the, lay, the photo that I wanted on show, but the way it works out, um, then I would end up with one portrait and one landscape on the same card. And I wasn't particularly happy about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one on a card, but, but I'm going to make sure that this photo is the one that's most visible of the photos on the cards and then I went with a portrait picture that is a more of a detail shot but it at least gives some connotation to the evening so this um, shows the sticker that has all the details about the day and um, so you need to group everything um, in your four pairs and then you'll have one that you can just put aside and we're going to start by adhering these to the cardstock so I just adhere them and then leave a tiny little border. But I leave a bigger border at the top. So I always start with that bottom photo first. Line them up. And then I leave about an inch of space at the top so that there's room for journaling and embellishment. So I'm just going to cut this side and then um, about an inch at the top. So that leaves me with a piece like this. And then I'm going to turn that over and put two photos on the back just the same. There we go. So there's pictures on both sides and I'm going to repeat that with the second group of four 
um, so that I have the same thing. Now with two portrait photos, I'm still going to adhere them in the same way. It's just that when I take the card out to look, I'm obviously going to turn it that way so that I can see the portrait pictures. With the photo cards finished, I'm just going to put those aside for a second and then build the basic page so that we can put this inside the pocket. So I'll just put those to the side and then I'm going to go to the background paper. So this sheet's going to stay whole. I just need to take the branding strip off the bottom. And then I'm going to add the card or sorry, not cardstock, add the transparency pocket. So I'm just going to take the transparency and I want the pocket to be about seven inches tall. So I'm just going to measure it on my trimmer and cut straight across at the seven inch mark. Now we do need to attach the pocket and there are a few different ways you can do that. You want to be able to secure the three sides so that you can put things inside the pocket and it won't fall through. However, if you're going to put it in a top loading page projector anyway, um, you don't have to be completely um, sealed on the bottom because the page protector is going to hold everything in there anyway, so um, not you don't have to stress about it too much. But what I prefer to do is to stitch three sides of the pocket with the sewing machine. But if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't like to sew on paper, there are a few other things you can do. You can use double-sided tape, and then if it shows, you can cover it with a border of another paper if, um, if you need to, or border stickers or anything like that. Or you can stitch it by hand, you can staple it in the corners, and you can run a, a ribbon across to hide double-sided tape or staples or anything else like that. Um, one of the things I like to do with the uh, transparency is I do f sometimes find that this raw edge across the top is just a little jarring for the layout. So what I like to do is cut a piece of paper to go across that um, that top bit and I fold it over and stitch it onto just the transparency. So I'm just going to cut a strip of this. And then the idea is that you can just fold it in half and sew it over the top so that the transparency is all sealed inside this paper essentially so you don't have that hard edge of the transparency plastic. So I just add a little bit of adhesive inside so that it will stay in place while I sew. So what I'll do is stitch this all the way across with the sewing machine and then I will stitch the pocket to the page on three sides. So I've sewn the pocket to the background paper, just stitch the paper across the top and then stitch the pocket on three sides and now I can start to pretty up the rest of the layout. I'm going to start with the photo that's going to live on the top of the pocket, on the front of the layout. And for that I want to create a pattern paper backing. And I want to start with quite a large mat. So this is a 4 by 6 photo. I'm going to cut the mat to about 5 by 7 And I'm going to cut that from this hot pink paper. But then I'm going to cut some other blocks of paper from these three pieces to create some layers here where I can add the title. I've layered the photo onto the 5x7 mat and then added a few blocks of the pattern paper, one underneath the photo and one on top of the photo. Obviously if there's something important on your picture there then don't cover it up, but in this case it was just a bit of um, dead space, there's nothing really there to be seen. And um, the trick here is that you do want to check before you put adhesive on the back of the big mat. You want to make sure that you don't put any adhesive that's above the pocket because obviously then that would stick to the photos that are going in your pocket behind. So you just want to make sure that you um, 
put the glue below that line and then everything else will be fine. So I'm going to bring back the cards with the photos and just pop them into the pocket so I can start to get an idea of how things are going to look. This was the photo that I wanted to make sure was most visible of the eight that are in the pocket. And what I'm going to do is repeat these pattern papers on embellishment at the top of the photo blocks and I also want to bring in um, definitely the chevron and perhaps a little bit of that polka dot that's across the top of the of the pocket as well. So what you want to do when you start the top embellishment of the card is anything that's going to go above the top of the card like a tab or anything that's going to come above that that top edge of the cardstock. Anything that goes above, you just want to make sure you cut two so that you can put one on the front and then mirror it and put one on the back. So um, it doesn't matter what shape or size. So if you want to do big circles, if you want to do a starburst or a heart or a star or anything like that, as long as you can cut two of them and have them back to back, then when you flip it over, you won't see like the back of a sticker or the back of a, a pattern that's mismatched. So I took the scraps left over from these larger boxes that I um, added here and I've just trimmed smaller boxes and layered them up to add to the top of the photo cards. And then I've just added some stickers. They're all from the same sticker book. This is the Daydreams Accent and Phrases book. Um, so there's, I'll give you a, a quick look at what's in there. There's quite a bit all in that same color scheme. So I've added um, the the little just little strips layered up and then some stickers to give that a bit of color and the empty space here I'm going to add journaling but before I do that I'm going to add the title just here on the um, blocks of pattern paper that I added earlier I had started with those yellow and gray letter stickers but it turned out they I didn't have the right letters left to spell out what I wanted so I went back and um, found these from um, Cosmo Cricut and they're kind of cream and black which picks up on that same cream and black combination in the chevron fabric paper and then I'm going to use those pink letter stickers from Sassafras. I'll just finish the embellishment off with a few little stickers. So I've got one border sticker here and I just, I'm not going to use the whole piece, but I want to see where to cut it. So I'm just going to cut that to fit. And then I'll use the other little piece somewhere else on the same layout. And I'm going to use these um, little dimensional flowers. They're from the, the same collection, the Daydreams collection. And just a little bit of that blue in there so that um, there's a little triangle of that same color there. And I think actually I can put the rest of these hearts quite near the others, so they're all there together. So that's my title done, which leaves my journaling. So I'm going to um, pull the cards out and add my journaling here. And there's also, if you need more space for journaling, obviously you can add additional cards. You can add as many spaces into the pocket as you need. You can also, because you have a large mat here, you can journal around the edges if you need more space there. Here you can see the finished layout alongside the first layout that I had already made. So you can see how, although they weren't a two-page layout, the colors and the papers coordinate to tell that story across um, the divide in the album. So now it's your turn. If you want to grab nine 4x6 photos and create a page with this design principle, if you upload it to the gallery at Two Peas in a Bucket anytime this month before the 29th of next month, then you'll have a chance to win a Two Peas prize and a little extra shopping credit there. So I'd love to see what you make. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next month with 4x6 Photo Love.